Varsity and Book Vault Athletic Complex again for many of you for the first time. So we're going to get things uh, started off by talking to with Nichols President, Dr. Jay Kloon. Thank you. I'm going to take this off. Miss Allison wanted to be here so badly, but she is shopping for my daughter who's moving back in an apartment in a few days and had to go to Homa. Uh, good afternoon. I want to thank you all for coming for two really exciting starts at Nichols State University. We are so glad to be here in the Book Vault Athletic Complex and for all of you to get the chance to see the new home of Colonel Football. Hopefully you get a chance to look around and to feel the excitement that our student athletes felt last week when they entered the building for the first time. If you haven't seen that video, please go and watch it. So much of what we do here at Nichols State University, the very excitement that we saw on the faces of our football student athletes would not be possible without the generous support of so many of our loyal community members, many of whom are in this room today. Standing in this facility today, we cannot thank the Book Vault family enough for their generosity. The Book Vault Athletic Complex is an example of the support that Nichols has for continued success as a premier FCS football program. That respect for Nichols was also evident during the hiring process for a new leader for our baseball program. As inquiries about the position started as soon as it became open, as I know from poor JT, uh, his cell phone blew up as a result of the baseball opening. But fit is so important to us here at Nichols. Nothing is more important than fit. I think the, evident, the evidence of that success is with Coach Tim Revo, the fit for this program here. It was clear from the beginning of the search process that Mike Silva is the fit we need here on campus, in Thibodeau, and in the Bayou region. Success on the diamond has followed Coach Silva everywhere he's coached, including the hosting the 2021 NCAA bas baseball, <laughs> baseball regional at Louisiana Tech this past spring. But it was his commitment to student athletes that brings us here today, the alignment of his goals and the importance of community that both Coach Silva and Nichols share will be the continued, will help the continued and storied success of the Nichols baseball program. We are looking forward to Coach Silva, his wife Reagan, and his son Dylan becoming members of the Nichols family. Welcome. <laughs> so I'm extremely excited today to introduce to you to our new head baseball coach. Uh, I'm extremely confident in Coach Silva's and our selection to be the head coach at Nickel State. Coach Silva has demonstrated an incredible track record of success at each of his previous stops throughout an acclaimed career. I'm inspired by his passion. If you spend a minute with him, you'll understand what I'm talking about. For the sport, the dedication for his student athletes. Uh, advancing the student athlete experience is both on and off the diamond. In this together is our motto this year for our department. He embodies being a team player, and I'm glad that he's leading our team. Not, take, not gonna talk too long, just wanna let you know that we are so excited to welcome Mike into the family, his wife Reagan, his son Dylan. Welcome to Colonel Country, our new head baseball coach, Mike Silver. <laughs> Okay, well, I guess good afternoon. I appreciate the introduction. Thank you very much. I'm, uh, I'm Mike Silva. I'm the new baseball coach, which most of you know here at Nichols State University. And, and I can't express or put it in words uh, how excited I am to be here and to be your new baseball coach. Uh, I think I speak for my family, my wife, Reagan, and my son, Dylan. Uh, we look forward to being a part of this community, being entrenched in this community, and uh, being like everybody else in this community, just, just like uh, JT said, in this together. Uh, I think that kind of represents who I am and what I'm about and, and what our family's about. But um, I would like to thank our president, Dr. Kloon. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I can't tell you, I've been working my whole career for an opportunity like this. And so from the bottom of my heart, I'm going to work daily to make you proud. Uh, our athletic director, Jonathan Terrell, I, I appreciate you. I, I can't tell you, your, your, your enthusiasm and excitement for this university 
for this athletic department, um, second to none. You embody what it means to be a student athlete here, and I hope our players can feel that enthusiasm for me like I felt from you when I came here to interview for this position. Thank you. To our Deputy Athletic Director, Andrew Kearney, I, you probably don't get enough credit. I, I've seen firsthand the hats that you wear, the enthusiasm, the effort that you have. No job is too big, no job is too small, and just your passion, your energy you want to, for, to allow us to be successful because ultimately you care about our president's vision of putting student athletes first. I felt that the first time I met with you. Somebody that gets a lot of credit because he's accomplished a lot, uh, and he probably doesn't want me to thank him right now, uh, Coach Tim Rebo. Coach, you don't have to do what you've done for me, and I've been here a short time. What you guys don't know is he, he walks across the hall all the time. He's getting ready for a football season. He's got a nationally ranked team with national championship hopes and, and goals, and he puts other people first. Uh, he's never too busy. I can't tell you how many mornings I've sat in his office. I've asked him real questions. I needed leadership and direction. Uh, it's like having another athletic director here at the university. I think that JT's vision is embodied by you. I hope that I can make this community as proud as I know you have. You're from the, the River Parishes. He's been educating me on the, on the area. I'm from just up the bayou in Hull, Massachusetts. So. <laughs> But, but this is home now. Uh, this is home for us. Um, I want to make you proud. I want to make our alumni proud. I want to make our current players proud. I want to make our staff, the people in our office. If you take an opportunity to walk over in our athletic offices, where's Miss Connie and Miss Rhonda? I don't know if they're in here. Uh, they don't get the recognition. Th there's not a time of day that they're not available. There's not a time at night that you can't call and get a response. And it's the behind the scenes people that allow people like myself and our student athletes to chase championships, uh, to chase degrees, and to get the recognition. And they don't stand up at this podium. They don't get that opportunity. But I promise you, you're with me every single day. I, I, I go home and I tell my wife about the effort that you put in daily and about how, you know what, we might be short staffed and we might have some shortcomings like everybody does and no place is perfect. But what separates this university from other universities, and this community from other communities, is our people. People said, how are you going to recruit? How are you going to sell? How many of you want to leave? When people come here, they don't want to leave. They want to stay. They want to be a part of it. Early in this process, I reached out to, as soon as I got the job, to all the student athletes, the current ones. And I asked them about their experience here, and, and I listened, just like I've listened to so many of you. So many alumni, uh, so many supporters, and nobody, la not least important, is our student athletes. They're the reason that we all do it. They're the root of everything we do at this university to graduate them, and they're the people that are ultimately going to continue to grow the university as donors and supporters and probably employees someday, not only in this community, but in the university itself. They talk about the passion they have for this university. They talk about how you make them feel in this community. They talk about the dedication that our administration has. They talk about their vision and what they want. So many people have walked in my door and walked in my office, and, and I can feel that energy. I feel that energy. I hear you. I'm listening. I don't have all the answers. I'm not walking through that door, and all of a sudden, we're going to hoist a championship trophy. This industry does not work like that. But we can. If we're truly in this together, we can. We can do this. We have things that separate our university from other universities. Every university is not in Thibodeau, Louisiana. It's not in these surrounding parishes. It doesn't have that authenticity of the people that are really invested, uh, that are here every single day. It doesn't matter if you, they have to grab a shovel and help you fix the field or go out and help you raise money. There's just no job too big and there's no job too small from the people that are here. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate that and how much I feel that. Um, I just want you to know I don't take this responsibility lightly at all and, and it's so important for you to understand something because as this process went along there's stuff that comes out in the media about jobs and other people I wanted this job I want to be here I wanted to be the head baseball coach at Nichols State University I'll tell you why I had a little bit of experience uh, recruiting at times down in this area and it, there's certain places you go and different coaches could tell you where you're like man that's a, that's a unique place those are special people you leave looking forward to the next time you have an opportunity to come back. And in this community, 
being able to live here, being able to be around these people, I just saw it as a job that had endless opportunities and possibilities. I believe we can create the most unique environment in college baseball right here in Thibodeau, Louisiana. I believe that. I think as a leader, you have to convince yourself first. I wouldn't have taken this job if I didn't convince myself. I don't have all those answers. I can't sit down and tell you exactly how we're going to do it. I have an idea. I have a vision. But we can. We can talk to each other. We can communicate. We can work together to not only create that unique environment, but also to bring Southland Conference championships right back home to where they belong, just like our football team's done, just like our basketball team's done. It's time for baseball to take that next step as well. Um, I, forgot, I wanted to mention this. So I was, when I was interviewing, I had uh, Miss Katie Callahan was sitting there. She's a former student now. She works at the athletic department. She, I don't know if she's in here, but she, oh, she's sitting down, and everybody's interviewing you, and they're going through, and everybody's being great, and they're, they're, they're asking questions just like interviews do, and it gets to her, and I wasn't ready for it. She's like, Coach, I want to win championships. That's what I want. And so, <laughs> so, so I said it. I do, too. I just I didn't say it that day, but I do, too. That's ultimately the goal and the root of everything that we do. And I walked out of there, though, and uh, – I was joking with her today. I love that passion. She's a student athlete. She lives here. She works in the department. She lives it every day. And so if you're not surrounded with people that have that dream and have that vision, then ultimately, who do you want to be surrounded with? Um, so people said lofty goals. How are we going to accomplish these things? It starts with people. It starts, I hired a great staff. Lad Rhodes is going to be our hitting coach and recruiting coordinator. Uh, we have ties together through mutual contacts. I've had an opportunity to watch him grow in this industry. I know the type of human being he is. A little bit about me, I hire human beings first and coaches second. I'm not going to go hire a great coach who's not a human being. That's not going to fit in our community. He's an unbelievable person. He's an unbelievable husband. He's an unbelievable father. Our players are going to benefit. He's great at developing, developing relationships, and he has experience in this conference, which is important. Cody Livingston is going to be our pitching coach. I've been in the trenches with Cody. There's nothing that he will not do to be successful. There's no, you, when you meet these guys and you have a chance to spend time with them, you're going to want to spend more time with them. That's really significant in this industry because our student athletes need to want to do that too. Because we're going to spend more time with these kids than we spend with our families and ultimately than they spend with their families. And then Grant Matthews. Grant's a local guy, Country Day High School. His dad's a high school coach there. Um, Grant's probably the only outside-the-box hire that I had because Grant wouldn't leave me alone. He wanted an opportunity in college baseball so much. And if you're from here or where I grew up in Hull, Massachusetts, it's hard sometimes to get somebody that's an outsider to really pull your strings and you want to hire him. But he, he embodied so many things, that persistence, um, passion. Uh, his story in college athletics of being basically a guy that they didn't want to becoming their best player in a major league draft pick. His passion for this area, he's, he's a New Orleans guy, uh, his understanding of who we are. I didn't sugarcoat what this job is and what this opportunity is and what his salary is, which is nothing. So, <laughs> and he still signed up for it. But these are names, these guys and these names, th these are going to be household names in college baseball. I'm confident in that. I was very fortunate, very rarely when you get a job do you get to hire the people that you want, that you feel like you needed to allow the program to grow in the direction that you have envisioned in your mind. And I feel like I did that. So you're not going to hear me say I didn't get to hire my people. Because my people, they're here with me. And I'm very grateful and I appreciate you guys for, for believing in me and taking this opportunity to be here. I promise I won't go too much longer. Um, I believe that life's about moments. I believe that. I'll talk to our student athletes about that. A moment when you show up to college. All of you know what that moment's like. A moment when you show up to your first football game or baseball game when you're a kid. Uh, these are special moments for coaches. And you don't get here without tremendous student athletes that believed in you when you were starting out in your career. I'm sure everybody that's ever coached that's in this room, or it doesn't matter if it's a little league team or, or, or a major league team, I think you can remember your first meeting with, with that team or that group, especially your first head coaching job. I remember mine. And thank God those kids. They were a godsend. I, I cannot believe they put up with me. And they taught me more about how to be a great coach and my struggles and my failures uh, than I taught them, that's for sure. But to every player that's ever believed in me, committed to me, um, thank, thank you. The student athletes, the root of everything we do. And for them to believe in you at any university you're working at is special. 
I just want them to know from the bottom of my heart I'm here because of you. From every university, every college, it gave me an opportunity. Um, I didn't have ties. I didn't have a famous coach that was going to call me. I told JT that when we spoke on the phone for the first time. He said, well, who's, who's calling on your behalf? I didn't have anybody famous. I, I've had a grind and work and work and get told no my whole career. I have a binder full of no's. And I told him, I'm just, I'm just looking for an opportunity. I'm looking for this opportunity. But this moment is special to me. It's special to my family. I'm grateful for you guys being here. Coach, I appreciate you using the facility to get them in here for me. I appreciate that. <laughs> I, hey, you get them to the field, too. We'll take them any way you can get them, Coach. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> um, to my family, my mom and dad, for believing in me. Stress in education. I was a kid that probably shouldn't have graduated from high school. I have two college degrees. Uh, to my wife, Reagan, and my son, Dylan, I'll get emotional talking about her. Uh, it's been 17 years. It's been dorm rooms. It's been working for no money. It's been somebody. She knew this moment was possible probably even on days when I didn't. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> Lastly and not least, Louisiana Tech University gave me an opportunity three years ago, going on four years ago. Coach Lane Burroughs, I'm indebted to you forever. I wouldn't be, we all know, I wouldn't be standing here today if it wasn't for that opportunity that he gave me to be a part of his vision for that university. And I can't tell you the amount of gratitude I feel towards the people of Ruston, towards the Louisiana Tech community, and towards Coach Burroughs and the rest of the coaches that I was so privileged to work with there. From the bottom of my heart, Coach, if you see this, thank you. To the people of Ruston, the way you treated my family, uh, the way you supported me through the ups and the downs. You guys saw this year at the run, but we went through a lot before that. Thank you. And for the support that you showed me when I was pursuing a dream to leave your university and come to another great university. Thank you very much. To everybody that's here today, I want you to know from the bottom of my heart, thank you for taking part in this moment for me. This is a special moment for me and my family. Yeah, I'm good. Easy. You know, it is a little different than a couple of my stops, and I'm well-traveled. I'm from Hull, Massachusetts, and I know that's a long way from Thibodeau, Louisiana, but it's seven miles long, and it's a half a mile wide at its widest point, and those people are proud. They're proud people. They're proud of their community. They're proud of their, their people that make it out of that community. Th this reminds me a lot of that. They're very passionate. How am I going to help build this with that? I think getting kids here, I talked about that from the recruiting standpoint, getting student athletes here, what do we have to sell? We have to sell you. We have to sell this community. We have to sell our leadership and their vision. I think the one thing that I noticed from the beginning is when people step on foot, step foot on, on Nickel State University's campus, very few of them want to leave. A lot of you that are sitting in here have made a lifetime of living here because of the experience that you had at this university. I don't think that happens by accident. Now, I'm not saying we have the best facilities, uh, but I'm not, we don't have the worst facilities either. We have enough, but we have the best people. We have a tremendous vision, we have a tremendous growth, but that's my job. My job is to sit there with an 18 to 22 year old young man and sell this vision, sell this university, and I, I think coaches all have egos. I believe I can do that, and so that's kind of my direction with that. I'd like to be everywhere. Uh, I can't be everywhere, but I'll be as many places as possible. I think that this isn't a job where you're sitting in the office hiding from people. I think this is a job where you're going to be out entrenched. I love people. I'm a relationship person. Uh, those relationships are important. I want to know the names of every person that's at our games, and I want our relationship to be strong enough where I can call you up and tell you, hey, you need to get back to the games. I, I know you're about to tell me all the mistakes that we made the last week, but we still need you. <laughs> We still need you at the games. And so I think it's a personal relationship. This is a personal place. This isn't corporate. This is a mom and pop. This, it's real. It's raw. It's authentic. That's how I feel about this. And if I'm wrong, somebody tell me. But the, the passion that you feel, that you see, that you hear from the people. You know, Dr. Kuhn told me in our brief meeting when I was on my interview, he said, athletics are the, are the front door to the university. I believe that. What a responsibility that is. 
It's a front door. So I need to be out there and be present and be setting a good example and be invested in our community because I'm part of that front door to our university and I'm definitely the front door to our baseball program. I dialed it down today. <laughs> hey, I didn't even have any coffee. There's just half a cup with Coach this morning. Um, yeah, I think so. Look, I think energy creates energy creates energy. I, I don't think what, what great has ever been accomplished without enthusiasm and energy. If, I, if, if I'm not excited to be here today, then why am I here? Why am I moving my family yet again? I just, how am I going to sell that message to our student athletes? How do you want me to get our kids excited about coming here? How do you want me to set a recruit down when he walks on this campus with his family? They might sit there and see things that are better at other places. But if they go to another campus and they deal with another coach that has more energy and passion for the university than he, that he's working at, then I have failed as a leader. Because how do I get them excited if I'm not excited? And I think you're not only going to get that from me during the games with the kids. I wake up like this. My wife's been putting up with it for 17 years. Um, but I'll be honest with you, you kind of are who you are, right? And so I don't run from that. I think it's probably my biggest strength. And I think we'll be able to utilize that to help grow this program. And I think by doing that, it will continue to help grow this university. And ultimately, that's the goal. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's been great. I'll tell you what, uh, it's a great question. I've talked to them all on the phone. I've met with a handful of them that are here. I let them know when I was going to be in the community. And most of them had the opportunity to stop by. Um, I wasn't nervous about this job. I didn't feel pressure. I think pressure is a choice. I feel pressure now. I felt pressure from those kids. I want to give them the experience that a student athlete deserves. I want them to experience success. I want, that, I want them to walk around campus with pride. And I've expressed that to them. I've listened to them. I've heard them. You can listen to people and not hear what they're saying. I've spent less time telling them about my vision for the program than I've probably spent telling you. But what I have done is I've listened. I've listened to their vision. They're living this life. They were here before me. This is their program. This is your program. This is their program. This isn't my program. This is this university's program. I'm just fortunate enough for however long I'm fortunate enough to be the leader of it for, for, for hopefully a long time. Hopefully. Um, Hopefully, JT. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully for a long time. Um, but those kids, that's how you build a program from the inside out. But you don't build it from the outside in. You, you build it from the inside out with genuineness and passion and compassion. And you listen and you hear them. Now, I'm going to push them. I'm going to challenge them. I'm going to motivate them. I'm going to hold them accountable. But I'm going to care about them. And they're going to feel that. I'm going to love them. When a parent sits in my office, I'm going to tell them to love your kid like he's my own. That's not coach speak. That's not lip service. And they're going to feel that every day. Doesn't mean they're going to like me every day, but I'm going to love them every day. Because if that's not what you got into this industry for, then what are we sitting here doing this for? I don't understand it. I don't understand people that are in this industry, and that's not what they're in it for. I had coaches change my life. I think that's the greatest opportunity influence that we have. Hopefully, at, while we're doing that, and we're laying that foundation, we can win championships because I think that's a byproduct of everything else. So I have. My interaction with them has been awesome. They're enthusiastic. They're excited. I've never been welcomed with this type of open arms. I think they're ready for a fresh start. I think they're ready for a new era in Nichols baseball, and that's what we're getting here. You know, that's one of the questions the kids ask. I, I can't put into words how special it is. It's the root of everything we do. Um, on the field, you're going to want me to talk about that. Off the field, we set a record for academic All-Americans. On the field, we set a record for athletic All-Americans. Um, I'll tell you how I'm going to carry that. Our team had their priorities in order. They had their values in the right places. And I think that the success that we had was a byproduct of that. Everything kind of fell into place. We didn't have the most talented team in America. We didn't have the most talented team in Conference USA. We had the best team. We had the most dedicated team. We had the most passionate team. 
The thing about those student athletes that I tell people and they think it's lip service and a coach speak for an interview is they were dedicated to Louisiana Tech University. They were bought in. That place meant something to them. It meant something to me and it still does. I want our kids, I want you in the community, I want you to feel how much this place means to them, how entrenched they want to be, how much you mean to them, how much they mean to you. I, I think that's how you develop the chemistry. I think that's how you develop championships. I, I think that you st every coach stands up here and says, we're going to win championships. And look, we are. I'm not going to run from that. But I can't tell you, what, what is a championship? Is a championship having a really competitive season? graduating a student athlete that might be the first generation in his family to graduate from college that's going to go on and have a really successful career. We had some of those at Louisiana Tech. Is it putting players in professional baseball? We had some of those guys that wouldn't have been successful. I think success at different levels means different things. Now, I get it. Everybody, everybody wants to win championships, and I do too, but I think that's the route that I shared with the kids here is I want them to have that type of passion for that university. I want, th I want that end to mean a lot to them. I want this right here, it means a lot to me. As soon as I signed up to come here, it meant a lot to me. And it's meaning more to me every day as I meet each of you and each experience that I have in this community and at this university. It means more every day. You can't fake the pride and the passion that people at Nichols State University and the community of Thibodeau have. You can't fake it. You can try, and if you're fake, I do know this about y'all, you'll see a mile away coming. <laughs> I've already had a couple of y'all. You know who you already told me, Coach, you're from a long way from here. I, I'm from right up the bayou in Hull, Massachusetts. That's where I'm from. Thank you. Appreciate it.